Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool, and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. In this series, I'm going to be going through the system internal suite, and out of that suite of utilities and tools, I'm gonna to focus on what is known as PS tools. These are great utilities and tools, especially for both local and remote devices. Here you can see a list of what is known as PS tools. We have everything from PS Exec, PS File, PS Get Sid, and I'm gonna walk through these tools in this series and show you how to use them effectively, how do they work, and how you can leverage them in your everyday as an IT professional. You can go to Google and type in Syst Internals and it will get you to Microsoft's documentation page. When you get to Microsoft's site on Syst Internals, you can drill down to Process Utilities and come down here to PS Tools. Now, most of these tools were written by Mark Brasinovich, who's now the CTO of Azure, and a gentleman called Bryce Cogwell. Both of those no longer manage these tools. I think most of these tools are being managed by Microsoft's internal team. I believe that Mark does keep a finger on some of these tools, but right now a lot of these are still being maintained by and updated by Microsoft. You can download the PS Tool Suite right from this link here and extract it. These are all portable apps that do not require any installation. It's best to use the Microsoft Store to install these tools. By downloading and installing using the Microsoft Store, one, they're updated automatically. Two, all of your environmental variables are modified. So when you launch any PowerShell or command prompt, those tools will be available without having to go in and modifying your system environmental variables. This is definitely the preferred method on your administrative workstation. Once you have downloaded PS Tools, you can extract it into a folder. I typically like to take these tools and put it on a network share and my documentation and all my other tools in one central location. Some people prefer a USB drive, whatever works best for you. Once you download these tools, you can go to the PS Tools CHM, which is the help file. Be aware that many times if you try to use the CHM file, which has all your syntax, and some real bare bones help, but it's better than nothing. You can't view any of this information because you have to unblock the CHM when you download anything from the internet. Microsoft protects you against yourself. So come to your CHM file, right mouse click, show more options, go to properties, and you will have an area right in here that will say unblock and you'll have to unblock it, say okay, and then you can actually access this help information. All right, when it comes to help on syntax and information about these utilities that Microsoft produces, let me rant just a minute. I've been using these tools for a long, long time. There is no question that the engineers and developers who write utilities for Active Directory, for Windows Server, for Windows Operating System, these guys know what they're doing and they're bright, and intelligent, that's not on discussion. What is a problem is they make these utilities free for the IT community, and they give us the most basic, absolutely minimum syntax and information about that utility. And basically it's, okay, it's yours, but you're on your own to figure it out. And some of these utilities can take hours and hours to figure out what it is to make them work. For example, PS List requires remote registry service to be turned on. Well, today that's disabled in every PC because of security. So you're spending two hours beating your head up against a wall to get PS list to work. 
And there's nothing in the documentation that remote registry service must be enabled. That drives me nuts. If I'm running an IT production, I don't have that time to try to figure out what was plainly not in the documentation. This is a real problem. And Microsoft is not to blame entirely in this. Have you ever read Linux man pages? That's cruel and unusual punishment. So that's the purpose of these videos is I'm trying to save you the hours of wasted time. I'm gonna get right to the point. How do they work? How can you use them? Avoid the time wasting process of trying to figure them out. So I've done this with DC.eggs for Active Directory. I've done this for Replication Manager, Rep Admin that helps you quickly use this very powerful but challenging utility to solve your replication issues. And we're gonna do it with PS Tools. Get you in, get you out, and effectively use this tool without wasting a whole lot of time. Now, the first of the PS tools is what is known as psexec.exe. Now, psexec allows you to execute a variety of utilities, tools, and applications on one or more remote computers. It's an incredible utility and tool, but I've already done the full video on this utility alone. If you go to the Tech Savvy Production site on YouTube, you will find the very first video on the home page. It's called PS Exact. So you can access that. There's video notes, there's slide decks. All that is available to anyone. Just as a reminder, when you go to our channel, you can go to the search and you can type in any video title and you'll find the video that you're looking for. Now, this is the thumbnail of the video. The link is below. And if you want to use the QR code, you can use the QR code. It'll take you directly to that YouTube site. So our first utility that we're going to get started in this series is PS Files. It allows you to close locked and open files on a local system by a remote user. This is a common problem for a file server that you have users remoting into and accessing their home directories, their, their documents, their spreadsheets, etc. If a user has a file open, the admin of that file server cannot move, rename, or delete directories and files that are locked by remote users. Now, keep in mind that not every application locks a remote file. So here I've got an example of a user laptop on a domain network, and there's a file server, Win 2016 DC2, and the user is going across the network, and you can see down below in Explorer, if you look at the Explorer view, you'll see the domain controller, a share called NUR, and they're in a subdirectory called doc. You can see a list of files shown here. If this user opens up PowerPoint and goes across the network and double clicks on the PowerPoint template that you see here in the list in Explorer, the PowerPoint, the application will communicate to the operating system on the file server and say, lock these resources and it will lock the following. This locking is known as handles within PowerPoint. PowerPoint has a feature called handles, and PowerPoint will then tell the server operating system, lock the file, don't allow anyone to do anything with this file. The director or the path, don't allow anyone to change it. All the associated registry keys, threads, window stations, semaphores, and events, I want you to lock them and hold them because I'm using them right now. Now, this is a characteristic of PowerPoint. Now, not every application, when it goes across a network, opens a file across a network, locks those resources like you just saw me describe PowerPoint. For example, I, I see a GIF file down here. If I take paint on this laptop and the user goes across the network and opens up paint, paint could care less what you do on this server. If you delete the file, rename the directory, it's really a function of the application. If the application says, I want to lock these files, I want to lock these resources, such as Word, PowerPoint, database, etc., those type of applications, they will have a tendency to use their handles to lock those resources. Whereas other applications like Paint, you want to delete the file? Hey, go ahead. It doesn't care. So where does PS Files come in? If I'm an administrator of that file server and I need to rename some things and this user is using PowerPoint or Word or some other application 
that locks the files on the server, I cannot do anything. Cut out of the picture, even as an administrator. With PS Files, I can actually go look at John and Sarah and Pete, all these people across the network, and see what files do they have open on my server and close them so that I can do what I need to do. Let's take a look at PS Files in action. First of all, I've got a domain controller here that is simulating a file server. And you can see I have a number of shares. One of those shares for the server is called NIR, N-I-R. Right now, no one is going across accessing any files on this server. So let's run PS Files on my file server and let's see what it tells the administrator. So right now I'm on the file server and it's telling me that there are no open files on this file server from somebody coming across the network and accessing folders, files, documents, spreadsheets, etc. No files are open. As an administrator, I can go into my folders and files and I can rename, delete, do whatever I want to. Now I'm going to take my laptop and I'm going to come across the network, go into the DC2 through the NER share. I'm going to come into the subdirectory called doc, and I'm going to access a file. So I'm on my client, and I'm going to open up Explorer. I'm going to go backslash, backslash, when DC2, when 2016 DC2. I see all my shares on that file server. So there's my NER share, double click, and I'm going to come down to doc. There's my document subfolder. And in here are a bunch of files that I can access. I'm gonna come down here to this PowerPoint and double click and open up this PowerPoint on this particular PC. I'm gonna go, while that's doing that, I'm gonna to go to another computer, open up Explorer and go across the network to the same server. There's my shares, there's NER share. And I'm gonna come down to doc. And this time I'm going to open up the GIF file. And this will, I think, let's go ahead and stop that and just use paint. And so that's the GIF and it's in paint on the one PC. Now back to my file server, I'm gonna type in PS files. Now that I have two computers that have open files, I'm gonna go ahead and, and you can see the first thing that PS file does is every open file, it assigns it a number. So I can use either this number or I can use a directory to say I want you to close out a specific file or I want you to close all the open files. And I'll show you both of those. So I can close open files and it shows me all the files that are open. Here's the PowerPoint and you can see it shows me all the directories, anything that is open by another machine remotely. So that's what PS Files allows me to see. Now let's see what PS Files allows me to do. I want to close all these files. Why do I want to close files on a file server? Because if I need to move any of these files or delete or rename anything that is held open by another computer remotely, I can't even as an administrator. Here I'm on the PowerPoint and I want to rename it and I'm just going to call it new and it says no you can't because it's open in the system process which means that's how these remote computers are coming through the file system and opening these files and so you can't do anything as long as these files are open. If I need to move this folder docs and I go right mouse click I want to cut and I want to paste it somewhere else It will say, no, you can't do it because these files are open by another computer. So this is where an administrator is really stuck until he closes out these open files. Now, I don't have to remote into the domain controller or the file server to do all this function. The beauty of PS Files is it's a remote tool. So I can do this from my administrative workstation. I'm going to do PS Files. I'm going to go into the file server, backslash, backslash my file server, and then if I need to use a specific username and password, I can. And if I want to close those files, I'm gonna use the dash C, and then I'm either gonna give a path, a relative path, and just say, everything in this path close any open files. Or if I just wanna close one file, I know the ID, 
I can close that single file. Here I'm on my administrator workstation in a PowerShell environment. I go hit enter and I can see the same things that I could see as if I was logged on. I can see all the open files on my file server. Now I want to close those out. Now in my case, I'm going to look at the path. I can see that all of them are going through the E drive and a NERSOFT directory. I'm just going to use E colon NERSOFT and say close any files in that path and it will do that. Here we have PS files, the remote file server, the path that we want all the files to be closed minus C and we'll hit enter and it closes all those files. Now back on the server I can now rename, change, move, cut, do whatever I want to do with these files because they're no longer locked by an external device. If you're wondering about this user that has PowerPoint open from the file server, well what happens to this PowerPoint slide deck that the user has opened since you've closed the file on the file server? Well it really doesn't impact this user at all unless they attempt to save. It will probably say can't save but you can save as and then they can save it locally on their PC. Some applications are real aggressive about going back and checking the original location of the file and in that case if you have one of those applications you may have to kick the user off the server completely. Everything we're doing with PS files is based on the concept of handles. If you're saying to yourself, handles, what is this guy talking about? I encourage you to go back and look at a series of seven videos that I did on the operating system. I really deep dive in understanding the kernel, user mode processes, understanding handles, understanding DLLs, understanding threads, what really makes up the Windows operating system, it makes a huge difference in understanding how to troubleshoot server and the client when you understand these concepts. When I throw out the word handle, you're going, what? It's absolutely okay. Go back and watch that seven video series on the Windows operating system. You'll see it here on the screen from day one to day seven. If you go back and watch that, you will have a much better understanding of the Windows operating system and what these utilities are actually doing. PS Files is a remote tool from your admin station. You can go out to any server. You can see all the open and locked files and directories. PS File assigns an ID to each of them so you can close them by ID. PS Files will allow you to close any locked files or directories based on path or ID. PS Files works in either the PowerShell environment or your command line environment. Now your syntax for PS Files is pretty straightforward. Just remember when you're using path, you don't have to have a full path. You can use a partial path and it will close any file based on a partial path, but you can use a complete path also to close a single file. Here's an example where I'm using PS Files to go to a server and close a file by the ID number and then I'm using the dash C and it will close that file. PS files will also display open files and here you can see I've got PS files backslash backslash Intel dash I nine and it's showing me an open file by a user home boss. And here's an example of PS file closing a file based on a path. I've got a complete path. Make sure you use your quotes. If you've got any spaces in your directory path or in your file name, make sure you include that quotes so you won't be pulling your hair out. Now many of you are going to be immediately remembering a very nice command line tool that works also in PowerShell. It's called openfiles.exe and it's related to PS files and it will query, it will display open files, it will also disconnect or close files open by network users. Let's take a look at it while we're on this topic. Openfiles.exe is built into your operating system. You don't have to download or install it, it's built in. Let's take a look at its syntax. Open files forward slash question mark allows you to see the main parameters. The main parameters are disconnect, what we saw in PS files as closing a file. They call it disconnect. Then you have query which allows you to display open files. And then you have an interesting feature called 
forward slash local. And that allows you to see all the open files by the local operating system. You can either enable that or disable that, or by default, you can just see open files from people remoting into your PC or your server in most cases. Let's take a quick look at the rest of the syntax. If I want to look at the files that are open, I would use the forward slash query. Then I can use forward slash S and the remote computer that I want to look in. If you want to use a specific domain, username, password, you can also do that. And you have this interesting ability to format the output. Remember, on a file server, you're going to have lots of open files. And you may want to format the output into a CSV, a list, or a table. So you have that option. So I'm going to use my admin workstation, and I'm going to use open files, and I'm going to query my file server for any open files. And here I'm going to add my domain controller. And it says I've got a user called Homeboss and it has a path open. Okay. Notice the concept of assigning an ID number to each open file or path. So much like PS files, open files also assigns that ID number. So you could close it by ID. Let's take a quick look at open files syntax. If I use the forward slash disconnect, which closes those items. I can again point it to a specific remote computer. Again, use the domain username password if I need to. And what's nice is I can close files by username. So if I've got John remoting into my file server, I can just close all of his files simply by his username. I also have the option of the forward slash ID, so I can use the ID number to close it by ID. Also, it has an open mode and a session name. I'm not going to go into that, but there are other ways that you can close open files and path. Here I'm on my client laptop. I'm going to go into my server. I'm going to launch Explorer. And I could go into that server. I've got a shortcut that takes me to the PowerPoint right here. So I could just double click this and it's going to take me directly to that file server, launch that PowerPoint that's on that server and open it in my client. While that is doing that, I'm going to go to another laptop and I'm going to go to my Explorer and go backslash backslash. There's my domain controller or my file server. Go through the NUR share and come down to Docs. And I'll launch a Word document. So now I have two users coming in through the network into my file server and they've got open files and open paths on that server. Back to my admin station, I'm going to up arrow and that's, I'm going to use the same query that I did before. We can see a lot more is going on now that I have two users in there. I can disconnect or close those based on the user. And in this case, they're all being accessed by Homeboss. So I'm going to do that. Take a look at my command line, open files. I'm using the disconnect, which is going to close those. Going to this remote device, which is my file server and slash a says you can close it by username. In this case, Homeboss has a lot of files open and I'm gonna close them based on username. We'll hit enter and notice those have been terminated. Let's query again that file server. I'm just gonna take a look. And right now, Homeboss has two paths open. Those probably have to do with that both of those laptops have Explorer open and they're still connected via the Explorer. Other than that, all the other open files and paths have been closed. Another of the PS tools is a tool called PS Get Sid. PS Get Sid makes it easy to translate SIDs or security IDs to their corresponding names, their groups, the machine, and to get a SID of a computer or a domain or a user or a group. SIDs are security identifiers. They're a way that the operating system identifies a user, a group, a computer, a domain name, Rather than using names, the operating system uses a complex number. This number, or SID, is used by access tokens, security descriptors, and they are used for the fundamental security system within NTFS, firewalls, and all kinds of other components within the OS. Every copy of Windows has a local SID, known as a machine SID, which is created during setup. Local groups, user accounts, all have a, this complex 
assigned number. We also get this concept of a relative ID or a RID. Active Directory has a SID. It also has a special role for its domain controllers so that it creates a Active Directory RID or a RID master that in Active Directory, all the SIDs that are created can be appended with this special numeric value from the RID master. So SIDs are very important in Windows. Now this is a SID. There is a lot of great documentation on Microsoft's website concerning SIDs. So PSGET SIDs allows you to quickly access this information. So by default, with no switches and arguments, if I type in PSGET SID, it will display the SID of the local machine. So down here below, you can see this is the SID for my local admin station. If I want to see the SID of a user, I can say PS get SID and put the username here and it will give me the SID for that user. Now in a very large Active Directory, if you're trying to find the SID of a username, it's wise to go ahead and use the domain slash username allowing PS gets said to find it much faster. Here's an example of that. I'm using the domain name slash username and it finds the SID of that user. Now, if I want to find the SID of a domain, I can again use PS gets said and put the domain name and it will show me the SID for that domain. Now, PS gets said is not a tool you're going to use every day, but it's a handy tool when you need it. You can actually point it to a file name and it will execute the command against a list of computers in that file. As we wrap up part one of PS Tools, we have more videos that are covering the rest of the PS Tools. But we wanna stop and just really encourage you to become a member of Tech Savvy Productions channel. It's $2.99 a month. You get early access to view all videos. You also get access to the complete series of PS Tools and all extended video series that we do. You get access to our video notes, PowerPoint slide decks. We have an ebook resource folder that we provide for our members and it simply provides us the necessary support so that we can produce the videos that you enjoy. Part two we're going to go into PS Info which allows you to gather information remotely about everything from kernel build number, system uptime, registered owner, organism, number of processors and much much more. You can get a quick peek at the hard disks and free space, etc. Things that IT professionals need to know. We'll do an extensive coverage of PS Ping, which allows you to do some fantastic connectivity testing. It uses TCP, ICMP, or UDP. It allows you to test bandwidth, latency. It has a resolution of 0.01 milliseconds. So it's an exceptional tool for the IT Pro. In the rest of our video series, we're gonna look at PS Kill, PS Suspend, PS List, which allows you to look at all processes, stop them, suspend them, whatever you need to do. Look at PS Log List, which allows you to dump event logs and quickly assess what may be the problem. PS Service, PS Shutdown, great tools. Become a member, you get access to everything. Don't forget, PS Exec is available to anyone who comes to the channel. It's already done, it's completed, it's got video notes, slide deck, 